Hi, my name is Lucio Simone. I'm the engineering manager for BC Group. And in this video, we'll be demonstrating the features and functions of the SA2000 series safety analyzer. In this case, we have the SA2010S model. This is our fully featured safety analyzer with patient simulator and 10 lead ECG uh, testing. So in this case, I already have my ECG leads connected to my device under test. In this case, a patient uh, monitor, the PM8000 from Mindray. And I have a chassis cable plugged in uh, to the ground terminal on the back of the device under test. I have the safety analyzer plugged into a standard uh, wall outlet, and I have the device under test plugged into the safety analyzer. Now when I first plug in the safety analyzer, it will turn on and be in the mains voltage mode. In this case, there's nothing for me to configure. I can just take my line voltage measurement directly off of the safety analyzer display. Up here, it will show me which units the measurement is uh, displayed in. And also, on this side over here, I have a receptacle uh, test indicator. Now, on the back label of the safety analyzer, there's an indication of what each of these LEDs mean. And um, this basically tells me that the outlet that I'm plugged into is wired correctly. Uh, what we're going to do in this test is some, some um, single fault conditions such as what happens if the outlet is wired in reverse, what happens if there's an open hot or an open neutral or open ground. And in order for those tests to be valid, we have to make sure that the receptacle that we're plugged into is wired correctly. So that's, we have our two OK indicators here that tells me that everything is ready and good to go. So we can begin testing. Again, we already did the mains voltage test, and then we can uh, test the device current. Now we'll notice that we have zero amps displayed, and also the indication for our test receptacle is down here in this corner. So the safety analyzer powers up in a safe condition where the hot terminal is open, as indicated here by this LED. So I can close the hot terminal here, and now we can see we have a slight power measurement. And if I turn on the DUT, that uh, power measurement increases. So now we can get our uh, device current, and we can see as it runs, um, and it's displayed in amps. So we have 0 0.28, 0 0.3 amps uh, on our DUT. Then we can advance to earth resistance. Now this is measuring the resistance from the ground terminal on the back of the DUT through the power cord to its earth ground. So in this case, uh, we can see we have uh, 0 0.07 ohms resistance. Now it's important if we, have a, um, if we have a high reading here, we may want to make sure that we get a good connection on the back of the device under test. Um, a lot of times there may be some corrosion or, or uh, buildup on the back of that terminal, so you may need to scrape it uh, to get a good connection. In this case, uh, 0 0.07, 0 0.06 ohms, that's a good reading. Now what we can also do here is uh, we can do this testing with open hot, open neutral, and make sure that none of these conditions, these are single faults, none of these conditions cause a change to our um, measurement on the device. So we can do reverse polarity, uh, open hot, open ground, and open neutral. So obviously if we open our ground, well now we have no ground uh, connected, so we can't get a resistance measurement. So we wanna make sure that when we're doing our earth resistance that we have the ground closed. Then we can move on to our leakage measurements uh, indicated by this group here. We'll start with the earth ground leakage. This is measuring uh, the current through the ground wire in the power cord. And again, we need to test this with uh, normal conditions. In this case, we have 59 microamps measured. We also want to test under single faults. So we have an open neutral. We can see our current changes. We have open hot, our current changes, and with reverse polarity. And then again with open hot and open neutral in each combination of these measurements. Now in this case, since we're measuring the ground current, we, 
we force the ground to be open so that our measurement circuit is in series with that ground. So we can't close it in this mode, that's normal. Then we can move on to enclosure leakage. In this case, we're measuring the, any touch current that we might get by touching the outside uh, enclosure of the device under test. In this case, again, we need our chassis cable plugged in, uh, connected to the ground, uh, a ground point on the enclosure. And in this case, we have uh, closed hot, closed neutral, and uh, forward polarity, and we have zero microamps. Lead to earth will measure any patient leads that would be connected to a person um, or that could be connected to a person to earth ground. And that again, that's making sure that if those leads touch me, I'm safe. If I'm laying on a table that's grounded, I'm not gonna get shocked. In this case, we need to select which lead we want to test. So we can test each lead one at a time and um, we can make sure that there are no uh, unsafe uh, conditions there. In this case, we measure zero microamps on each one of these leads, so that's good. We can also uh, measure all of them at the same time. So that gives you a quick indication that all of these are connect measured to ground. If, if all of them connected uh, give you a, a passing uh, test, then you don't have to test each one individually. But if you do fail with all of them connected, then we can go back and select one at a time and determine exactly which one is causing us a problem. Okay. Then we can do lead to earth, or I'm sorry, we just did lead to earth. We can do lead to lead. And that is gonna measure from any one connection to all the others. So uh, we can select any one. In this case, we have the right arm selected. So that's gonna measure current from this one to any other leads that are connected. Again, in this case, we have zero microamps. We can also test in all of the other conditions, single felt modes with open polarity, open neutral, open hot. And then lead isolation, that makes sure that if we have, uh, if any one of these terminals somehow comes in contact with the hot lead, uh, with line voltage, how much current would flow through uh, the device and to the patient. So in this case, we'll select, uh, again, any one of these leads, and we'll have to press the ISO test. Now what this does is this applies 110% of line voltage to the terminals here, and it measures how much current is flowing. So we have to uh, hold down the button. We can see the high voltage present is blinking. That's telling us that we are applying 110% of line voltage to those terminals, whichever one is selected and then we can measure the leakage current flowing through that. And we can do that for each lead. Okay, then we can go to external mode. That is uh, intended for uh, if I have a device that's maybe hardwired to the power grid, I can't undo the ground terminal. Um, then I could measure uh, I can't plug it in, can't plug the DUT in here because it's hardwired to a box, a switch box or the wall. So in this case, I could use an external mode to measure point-to-point -point leakage current. In this case, it's gonna measure current from chassis to external. And we can do a similar test that we did. Uh, we can connect our external lead here to uh, the right arm. We can make sure that the right arm is selected. Oh, I'm in external mode, I don't need to select. Um, so now I can apply the isolation voltage. What that's going to do is uh, apply our 110% of line voltage to these two terminals. And it's going to tell me the current that flows through them. So uh, now we have 19 microamps. Again, our unit of measure is displayed up here. So that's showing us we do have a safe condition and we can, can repeat that with the other uh, points as well. I can also uh, connect this to um, earth ground and measure leakage current from any point to ground. Uh, same, same testing we did before. Then in the 2010S, we have additionally the ECG waveforms. That's the S part, patient simulator. So if I select the ECG waveforms here, now this test, this, these LEDs show me which uh, ECG waveform I'm simulating. In this case, it's also going to uh, blink at the rate uh, 
for the uh, normal sinus rhythm. So I can select any heart rate we have here. So 240 beats per minute. In this case, it doesn't, the, the measurements up here don't mean anything. And we can see there's no unit of measure displayed because we're in the patient simulator mode. So then we could uh, make sure that the correct waveform is displayed on our, on our monitor. We also have performance waveforms, uh, AC sine wave of different frequencies uh, to test the filtering performance of the monitor. We have square waves at 0.125 hertz and also two hertz. And that also allows us to test the filtering of the monitor. And then also a triangle wave at two hertz. That concludes the features and functions of the SA2010S Safety Analyzer. For more information about BC Biomedical products or more training videos, please visit us on the web at bcgroupstore.com.